Hey, very special guest on tonight's Greatest Years in Music joining me for a big chat and uh, I'm guessing he's in full awesome good spirits tonight because his latest album Pillar to Post is out. Now, we are catching up with the one and only Tim Wheatley. Uh, Tim, firstly, congratulations. How big a sense of relief is it that uh, this latest album of yours, your second album, is now out and, and into the world? Well, thank you very much for having me first and foremost, but it has been a... Um, I finished this record about six months ago. It has been a long and anxious wait getting it out and uh, I am <laughs> so incredibly relieved that everyone can now hear it and and hear my I use in quotation marks here hard work well six months that you have been hanging out for this particular time does is it a case of celebration now or is that something that's planned in a couple of more months how did you how did you celebrate when all was said and done um, I celebrated actually when I landed back in Australia at the end of last week when seeing my family etc it was a, a, a long a long stint since Christmas that I've been away um, and uh, as far as busting open the the, uh, the bubbly, as they say. Let's wait and see how the record is received. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, at least just start with the cold can of beer and, and work your way up. Well, I may end up drinking myself to sleep because it's, it's so bad. But anyway, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, I understand crafted in three parts. First part, while straddling the Pacific and touring your debut album, Cast of Yesterday. And uh, the idea for this one kicked off in Melbourne. That's right. My uh, longtime counterpart, Michael Badger, um, who used to be in the Sparrows with me. We've been playing in bands together literally since we were 14. Uh, he uh, produced and recorded uh, the first three songs that we did in Melbourne um, as we were finishing my last record, funnily enough. Um, that's, how, that's how long these things take these days. So like we were saying before, very happy that people can now hear these. All right. Well, part two obviously uh, came to fruition in LA. You had a ripper producer and Justin Stanley behind Noiseworks, Eric Clapton, Beck, Cheryl Crow. In between working on the album, he must have had some incredible stories for you. Yeah, it's, it's, it's funny. You get two Aussie expats in the same little studio and the world becomes incredibly small we sort of <laughs> <laughs> we had uh, mutual friends and mutual enemies one thing that we that I've read plenty about is your time in LA and your longing to come home it must have been a great sense to work with Justin and, and he's from where you are Exactly right. No, it was. There is a there's a, a homely sense and a, a, a sense of familiarity when you're working with someone like that, and um, it, it certainly helped push the record along. And you're more inclined to listen to them and listen to the people that you know, love, and respect. You know, rather than someone else telling you, "No, this song's not good enough." It it really helped that he knew how to pad this situation with me. You mentioned before that uh, one of your your biggest highlights was coming back to Australia, seeing the family again, uh, obviously catching up with friends and family. Like, how do we compare to the hustle and bustle of a day in LA. I, I, look, I would say, say, um, life in Sydney and Brisbane in particular is very much like Los Angeles. I thought it was really quite similar. The um, the way they go about uh, life and and California in general. You know, it's uh, it's sun, beaches, and uh, <laughs> a very very carefree lifestyle. Whereas I find that say Melbourne and New York are really similar. They're a little bit more go go go, a little bit a little bit more cutthroat in that sense. Um, so I, I adjusted to Los Angeles pretty easily, actually. Pillar to Post, your favourite was the first song that you wrote for this particular album. Two years later, it's still your favourite, but I, I know you're not supposed to pick favourites as a muser. All your songs are your children, <laughs> and they're all equally loved and shared, but apart from Pillar to Post, is there another one that you just go, I love Pillar to Post, but I'm really digging this one too. Snakes Amongst the Cane that I recorded with uh, my good friend Helena Vestergaard. Uh, that is track two on this album, and uh, that's another one that I recorded alongside Pillar to Post so a long time ago with Michael Badger and um, I think there's something different to that one having said that you know I play it acoustically and I, I don't get that vibe that I get from Pillar to Post um, but when I'm playing it with the band it's the one I want to just play again and okay. again where does most of the inspiration come from when you're, when you're penning a song is it a case of I've just got this wicked idea it came to me in the shower I've got to jot it down or is it a case of working your way through different uh, notes chord structures in the studio and going, I wonder, uh, what if we, what if we try this? What if we try that? I, uh, my, my, my approach is just simplicity. Um, like you said, the shower is a funny one. I come up with a lot of lyrics or something like that, and I keep my phone on the dresser and try and reach out all wet. <laughs> 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 I've gone through a few phones like that, but that's, that's that, that is one of the ways. Or in the car, and you can yeah. hear the traffic and etc. Or if I'm listening to a good record, you, 
can hear the record that I'm stealing this lyric from. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, the album is out now. The celebration's hopefully not too far behind. What's next for Tim Wheatley? Uh, well, I head uh, to uh, Melbourne and Sydney and then straight back to Nashville for me. And um, I'm playing the Americana Festival over there. And then I'll be back in Los Angeles and returning here for Christmas. So a lot of toing and throwing. Oh, wow. I was going to say, is, is Christmas the first opportunity you're going to have to finally put your feet up? Because it's been a lot of work from concept to completion here. <laughs> it, it has. It's funny. It, it's, it sounds like a lot of hard work. But when you love doing it, the old cliche is that it, it's just not. It's just it's a lot not of a job for me. Yeah. No, it's, I've been waiting six months to finally get some work. So if I think any complaints for me from being overworked right now will be uh, uh, responded with a slap in the face. <laughs>